Hello and welcome to the Downseller Studio YouTube channel. My name is Jen and you're joining me today for a Vermont sheep and wool vlog weekend. I didn't think that I was going to be able to go to the festival this year. I've never been before. Um, you may know if you listen to my audio podcast that my mom has been sick. She was in the hospital for a long time in September. And so I had just told, you know, friends that I wasn't sure I was going to make any specific plans because I didn't know how things were going to go. But as it turned out, things are better. Mom is home and I had nothing planned for this weekend because I've not been planning things. And here we go. Let's head off to Vermont Sheep and Wool. I'm about an hour into the trip because of course I forgot to take out the camera on the way. I got my coffee. I'm well into that at this point. I do have a hand knit that I'm going to wear my sole dot in a crop, but I took it off because I don't want to get too warm in the car and then get out and be chilly. So it's kind of a gray day, but perfect for driving. There really hasn't been any traffic, which is lovely. I have about an hour and 45 minutes left to go. And as of now, I should be getting there before we're right as the festival is opening, really. So I'm very excited. Um, I'm going to meet up with Sue from Legacy Fiber Arts. Um, she and I had talked many moons ago about if there was any chance I could go that I should meet up with her and that she'd be happy to host me. And she very sweetly took me up on my offer <laughs> to come up at the very last minute. So Sue, if you're watching, thank you very much. I'm so excited. I haven't seen Sue since she moved to Vermont, so I'm excited to catch up with her I'm excited for a low-key festival to check out a new venue, to see some of my favorite vendors and some Pigskin Party vendors, sponsors like Michelle of Woolens and Nosh. Can't wait to see her self-striping yarn and to be able to pick from a whole table of it in person. Um, and to just see see what it's like. That's the excitement of a new a new to me event. So I will take you along for the ride. I may just do footage and then pop back in and tell you stories and play the footage. I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little rusty here. We haven't done one of these vlogs in a while, but I am looking forward to doing Vlogmas in December. So I need to get back on the wagon. All right, let's get back on the road. I'm looking forward to seeing a little bit more foliage change as we get. I just crossed over into New Hampshire. I'm at the visitor center. I'm hoping as we get further north into northern New Hampshire and Vermont that there'll be even more beautiful reds and golds and orange in the trees. So let's see what we see. More to come. we are almost to the fairgrounds um, I turned the camera on at a light and now we are just sitting in traffic I think probably people getting ready to go in yep I see people up ahead directing traffic and I'm so excited it's been an absolutely beautiful drive you've probably gotten a gratuitous amount of fall foliage for which I will not apologize <laughs> I could do this all day it was such a gorgeous drive Ooh, there goes the camera um, all right, let's see what the rest of the morning brings. $8 to get in and they took the money as we entered so now I am ready and I'm guessing there's no other ticketing process because I'm official. Here's our program. We're just making our way into park.
wait till those blossoms become a ripe seed. So you cannot use the same crop for linen and seed. You can get a little bit of seed out of the linen stuff, but you're not going to get a large amount. Okay, so as, and as you see, all those little pieces are starting to fly. Sorry, if you, <laughs> you, you can still take us a couple steps back if it's a little bit too crazy. start at the top. So it's best to start at the bottom. Now then this could still use a, a lot of breaking, but for yeah, to get the gist here, I think I can get enough off of it to, uh, I need to put those clamps on. I didn't get around to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> hey. Now, oftentimes we have three different sizes of hackles, and you want to start with the biggest and then work down to the smallest. Mm -hmm. Like cardinal. That's so cool. Yeah, pretty, pretty close, yeah. Once you've like, kind of started, and then you can start what I call smackle the hackle, and you're just going to go down and pull. Yeah. Oh my goodness.
home from Vermont Sheep and Wool. It is now Monday and I wanted to jump back in and tell you more about the amazing time that I had this weekend. I hope you've enjoyed the footage that you've seen so far, but I do have some other notes and things that I want to share with you. And of course, I will share my haul, which is reasonably modest. It was a very relaxing day, which was exactly what I needed. And pretty much what I had thought that the day would look like. Pretty soon after getting there, I was able to meet up with Sue and Chelsea from Leg Legacy Fiber Arts, Paige, who is Paige the Framer on Instagram, and Rachel from Treehouse Fiber Arts, who also does the floss toss with Sue on their YouTube channel. And um, also Natalie, who's Knit with Nat on Instagram. And we had all planned to meet up and I was glad that I found them because there is pretty much no cell service on that fairground. So that's a good thing to know. I think folks who had Verizon maybe did reasonably well. The rest of us weren't really getting much through. So thankfully I found them and didn't have to scramble. One of the first stops we made, which was my like one and only priority for the day, was to see Michelle of Woolens and Nosh, who is someone I consider a friend. She's one of our sponsors for our pigskin party knit along the last couple of years, and I'm so grateful for her. She's an incredibly talented self-striping dyer, and so I fell down pretty hard in her booth, although I think I actually was relatively restrained because I loved all of her colorways. I already cast on one that I purchased, this beautiful baby, which is called Peace and Light. It's on her Tarhi fingering base. And look at this. Isn't that amazing? I love it so much. I also got this Christmas sock set, which is called a Winter Mint. And a Halloween one, Mayor of Halloween Town, which has smaller stripes. Sue also got this one and she already cast it on and she's done some gray stripe, white, and got to the orange and it's beautiful. I love it. So I want to cast on all of them right away. But for now, at least we started with one. Michelle and her mother were also, were both in the booth. Her mom's name is Jane and they brought some nosh for us. So Woolens and nosh, they really lived up to the name. Some delicious like snickerdoodly kind of cookies that I think maybe had a little bit of pumpkin in them and some pumpkin bread with cranberries and maybe walnuts. I don't know. They were like food pushing in the best possible way and their treats were so delicious. So if either of you are watching, thank you for taking such good care of us. Um, let's see. So after meandering around for a little bit, we decided to get some lunch. Paige and I ended up in a line, I forget the name of the food truck. It said like sustainable something on it. It was a big blue food truck and we liked so many of the things on the menu that we decided that we would get two sandwiches and split them. So we got falafel and then this like spicy sweet potato with some sort of coleslaw and they were great. We loved both of them. So we were in line for a long time while the others went to a barbecue line and it was totally worth it. So that was great. When Paige and I sat down, almost right away folks came over to say hello, um, which was kind of funny timing, it was totally fine. Um, but she went over to talk with um, Sarah from Fibertrack and I went over to say hi to, um, I don't know if she says it Corinne or Corinne, it's been forever since I've heard her name pronounced, but you know her from the Willy Thistle. Um, she and I met, actually it might have been even before she moved to the States, but she came over, um, gosh, is it from the UK? I think she's from Ireland um, and does imports of all different awesome fibery goodness from overseas and then sells them from her shop, which is a really wonderful thing. So if you're ever looking for some really great UK and European and even like Icelandic and stuff, woolly wools, the woolly thistle has awesome stuff. I haven't seen her in years. So that was a really fun sort of chance encounter. I forgot that she lived so close. It's one of those things, you know it, um, and you don't think about it for years, and it totally falls out of your brain. I'm not a details person. <laughs> so anyways, we chatted with them a little bit, finished our lunch, and then did a little bit more shopping. One cool thing that they have at Vermont Sheep and Wool, which I don't 
know that I've seen in other places or if I have it's rare they had like a designer showcase where they had tents where designers had like lots of their samples that you could see and touch and try on and ask questions about and so the first one we went into I fell in love with this cowl right away let me grab you the so it was the knit sisu booth and I fell in love with this it is called the Love Today Cowl, and you can kind of see how those little stitches look like hearts. And as um, Rachel and Paige and I, I think we're all in there, and we're looking at the sample, and we're just talking about cowls, and Jill came over, and she's the designer behind Knit Sisu, who I've talked to online before, um, but totally didn't put any of the pieces together. So I was so grateful that she um, said hello and introduced herself to me. We got a great picture together, which I will put here for you to check out. Um, but yeah, it was just so lovely to meet her. Her di designs were gorgeous and she's got so many patterns. If you want to do like a really fun deep dive on Ravelry, I bet this QR code will work for you. Let me leave that there for a second. Definitely check her out or knit Sisu on Ravelry. So fun. From there, we went inside to another building and Sue was specifically looking for the Junction Fiber Mill, and I wasn't putting two and two together who that was, but I've met them before several times. They come to the Wayland Fiber Farm Days at Russell's Garden Center here in Massachusetts, and I fell in love with this colorway. This is a DK base. It's called Day's End, and I'm pretty sure maybe all but one of us got yarn at this booth, and Maybe it was Rachel already has a skein from there and we're thinking of doing a color work sweater and using this for the contrast color. Maybe Jennifer Steingast, they had a beautiful sil silver linings sample in the booth. I'm not sure if I want to do that one or another Jennifer Steingast. I also, I wore my Soldotna crop to the festival that day and I found that to be a great festival piece because you get to showcase your knitting without wearing a lot of heavy knits. So many festivals we go to these days are warmer weather even if they're later into the fall. And so having something that is light has been my priority. So this might become that. I bought two skins in case I wanted to do something larger or to make an accessory to go with but I'm very excited about this purchase. Oh, and I also found in my stash this Cascade Heathers that I think would be great for the body to use with it. So we'll see. Um, after that, we went outside and just sat down for a little while and knit and chat. We laughed and laughed all weekend. I think my face was sore by the end of the weekend for all the laughing we did, which was just exactly what I needed. From there, we, we shopped around just a little bit more and then some of the girls wanted to go over to the sugar house where they had maple creamies which i was thinking was like a maple cream like donut or something and it wasn't it looked like soft serve i'm not a maple fan so i skipped out on that so did sue we just sat at a picnic table and talked and then everyone else came and joined while they finished eating and that was the end of our day we headed back to sue's house and got some thai takeout for dinner and just had a lovely low-key night sue and i have like one million things in common, but one of them, which is very important, is that she goes to bed early. So I think by like nine o'clock, we were wrapping up and heading to bed. So that was Saturday in a nutshell. Sunday morning, we had a really low key morning. I guess this has turned into a weekend vlog, but I cast on this pair of socks at Sue's house in the morning. She made a beautiful quiche for she, Dave and I, we had a great chat. And then, um, Paige, Paige Miller was up with her husband for the week. They got a cottage on Lake Champlain and her husband rented a pontoon boat and took us out for the day. So Sue and Dave, Rachel, Paige, Paul, and me spent like five hours in the beautiful sunshiny day out on Lake Champlain. All four of us were knitting and just enjoying. We, um, Like I said, I don't know, it was like one big running joke all weekend. It was just fantastic. Um, we got out for a little bit and there was a state park whose name I'm not going to remember, maybe Burton State Park, I'll put a picture here, but we got off on the island, had a picnic lunch at a picnic table, and then walked around. They have all these different campsites and lean-tos and cabins there. 
would be a great place to visit and go back and camp. I need to talk to Dan about that because I would love to get back there at some point. Um, and just had a lovely afternoon of it. Um, before I left, Sue very kindly gifted me one last game that she had in the shop of the Fearless Colorway, which was part of a fundraiser that we did for the charity that my mom started called the Fearless Living Fund. We did this event in February and somehow there was just one beautiful skein left and she gifted it to me. So thank you, Sue, if you're watching. I so appreciate you. Her hospitality is second to none. She and Dave made me feel completely at home in their house, which is incredible. So grateful, so grateful. It, it was a very last minute trip for me. Sue had said, hey, if you can come, just come, it doesn't matter. And it wasn't until like 24 hours in advance of the trip that I said, did you really mean that? And she said, absolutely. And we made it happen. Two other quick things I'm realizing I didn't show you. Minor details, but you know, they're kind of fun. I got these beautiful rocks from Lake Champlain. I have a jar full of mostly white stones in my bathroom and I love adding to it from different places that I travel. I also purchased, oh, let's call it three, these beautiful, this beautiful coloring pad. It has every letter of the alphabet. Apologies if you're hearing noises from upstairs. Dan is off today and moving around. And I'm gonna give that to Hattie for Christmas. And last but not least, I worked on this pair of yarnable socks this weekend. And this one was already done. And this one I had turned the heel, but I did pretty much all of that on Saturday and a little bit of Sunday using my little lemon wood holder here. Isn't that beautiful? I've taken it apart. Um, this goes on here and then there's a leather strap that goes around your wrist, which is probably in one of the pictures. It would be more efficient to show you than doing what I'm doing, but I guess I'm already doing it. So this goes on here. I had taken it off because once I was sitting, it was easier just to pull it apart. You don't have to worry about it, but this goes on your wrist. You pull from the outside and the yarn just winds around because this can swivel. So that helped facilitate my knitting and chatting all day Saturday. So I thought I would share that little bit with you as well and how fun is that yarn. So I think that is a wrap on this vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, feel free to leave comments or questions down below if you've ever been to Vermont Sheep and Wool and have tips on what I should look for next time. I would love to hear that. If you have any other questions for me about things that I didn't talk about, um, let me know. Um, but for now, that's going to do it, and I will talk to you again really soon. Bye-bye.